Good evening, everyone. This week, Just Stop Oil hit Kings, and on Tuesday, Greta Thunberg was arrested. It could not be more appropriate, therefore, that tonight we debate the government's response to protest. The motion that this House believes the government is too harsh on protest, and we are honoured to be joined by some distinguished guests. In proposition of the motion tonight, Tim Crossland and Jolyon Maum are joined by student speaker Christopher Lord. and Lady Borwick. As a quick reminder on format, each paper speaker tonight has 10 minutes to make their case. Between each round of paper speakers, um, there will be a short time for floor, floor speeches in proposition, opposition and abstention. Um, should you wish to make one of these, please simply put up your hand when the moment comes and wait for the microphone to come to you. And finally, if you wish to make a POI, please keep it short and polite. Right. If we're glued to our seats, then let's get started. Um, opening the debate tonight is Tim Crossland. Tim is director of the charity Plan B Earth. He provided legal representation to small island states at COP21 in Paris and has brought a number of legal actions against the British government for violating its obligations under the Paris Agreement. Tim, it's a pleasure to have you here tonight. The floor is yours. Good evening. Um, it's good to be here. Thank you for being here. I'm going to talk mainly from the perspective of climate campaigns, which is what I know. The first reason you should vote in support of this motion is the government's crackdown on protest is unprincipled and dangerous. Let's go back to October 2018. The Frack Free Three were jailed. Shocking at the time. It was the first time protesters had been jailed for as long as anyone could remember. Turned out the judge had family links to the fracking industry. The Court of Appeal quashed those prison sentences and it said we have a long and proud tradition of civil disobedience in this country. It's extremely unusual that anyone would go to prison. We accept there is a low level of culpability for those acting on their conscience. That feels a long time ago. Last year, 50 Just Stop Oil protesters jailed in one day. At a time our prison's so full, judges are being told not to send violent convicts to jail. At a time when Germany is refusing to extradite to Britain because the conditions in our prisons are so dire. Last week, Morgan Trowland, Marcus Decker had their appeal against sentence refused. They climbed the QE2 bridge, suspended a banner just off oil, three years imprisonment, two years, seven months imprisonment, longer than for a serious sexual offence. Marcus is a German national, but he lives here, his life is here, he's a stepfather to two young children. Swella Braverman is applying to deport him to break up his family. Maybe you think that's fair. Let me tell you why it's dangerous. How do people in the movement explain their actions? Well, I'll give you the example of a friend of mine who's about to face jail. Here is the basic proposition she puts before the court. She's got a PhD in, in microbiology. There is, according to the science, a grave threat to my life, to the lives of my children, to all life, human and more than human. According to the social science, according to political history, nonviolent direct action is one of the most effective ways of bringing about transformational social change. I am a mother. And as a mother, I have an inalienable right to take proportionate measures to protect my children. That is how she puts her defence. And whether you agree with her propositions or not, even the courts, even her opponents, know those beliefs are sincerely held. So what happens when you criminalise someone just for doing what they think is necessary to protect those they love? 
Well, maybe some of them decide this is all getting a bit too much. Maybe. Maybe some decide this isn't a fashionable cause anymore. We'll go <clears throat> elsewhere. But a lot of the people who are deeply committed, they're not going to be any less determined. They're going to be more determined, and so are the people around them. This does not end well. We will not repress people's love for life out of existence. The second reason you should vote for this motion, this crackdown has its roots not in democracy, but in vested corporate interests. Let me make good on that claim, because it's a bold claim. You'll remember the Extinction Rebellion <coughs> protests of April 2019, those police skateboarding, um, the pink boat in Oxford Circus with the celebrities. Extinction Rebellion had three demands. Admit we're in a state of emergency. Net zero. Proper democracy, citizens' assemblies. Michael Gove met delegates from Extinction Rebellion. Lots of publicity around that. By May 19, one month later, Parliament declares a state of emergency. June 19, government <coughs> commits to a net zero target and a citizens' assembly. Wow. Remember the move then. The public was with those incredibly disruptive protests. But by July of the same year, everything has changed. Extinction Rebellion are the enemies of the people set on the destruction of our democracy. How did that happen? Big Oil had got worried because they'd seen this was affecting policy. <coughs> policy Exchange, we have a representative from Policy Exchange here tonight. I didn't know that until tonight, I should say. Produced a report Extremism Rebellion. That report said these people are dangerous, they are a threat to our way of life, they are here to break our democracy. That report was everywhere, all over the way, airwaves, in every newspaper. I remember one of the spokespeople, Rupert Reid, talking to John Humphreys on the Today programme. Rupert asked John, Hang on, everyone's talking about this report. John, you're a journalist, do you know where policy exchanges funding comes from. John Humphrey said no. Rupert said, well, then you're not a very good journalist, are you, <laughs> given so much airtime to a report and you don't understand its origins. Three weeks later, Vice magazine had done some digging. Policy exchange funded by Big Oil. Got all the information on that from Exxon and others. Hardly any reporting of that. By this point, the framing takes hold across the media and paves the way for deeply repressive police action in October. Protesters held up at gunpoint, people's arms, limbs broken. Rishi Sunak thanks Policy Exchange for having drafted <coughs> this anti-protest legislation. Reason three for you to vote in favour of this motion, this crackdown has now led to a crackdown on jury trial, that most vital of democratic safeguards. And if you doubted the point I was making before about whether this is actually a populist move or not, well, here's a good test. Because what is more democratic, what is more populist than a jury 12 randomly selected members of the public. Now, if that media presentation was right, if the people are driving this repression, jury trial would be bad, bad news for protesters. It would be guilty, guilty, guilty. That's not what's been happening. It's been the opposite. And not just climate trials, political trials. April 21, the Shell 6, who redecorated Shell HQ, acquitted by a jury. January 22, the Colston Four, you will know about that, acquitted by a jury. November 22, Palestine Action, redecorate Elbit, who manufacture drones that kill Palestinians, acquitted by a jury. January 23, insulate Britain protesters who blocked the M4, acquitted by a jury. Um, Please. Um, 
you obviously <coughs> quite rightly go on about um, the importance of judicial procedure um, when making any kind of decision. Were you not disbarred for flying in the face of all judicial procedure by going ahead with, well, but by making statements that actively prejudice a Supreme Court case? How can you go on about judicial procedure in good faith when you have been disbarred by the, whatever the legal thing is, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> When you have yourself been found to have prejudiced well, the outcome of the Supreme Court. I've got, I've got the point. Ah, uh, OK. Um, I will, thank you for your point. I'll answer it very briefly. In my opinion, the Supreme Court lied about Heathrow expansion being compatible with the state of climate emergency. And it felt important to me to express how I feel about a Supreme Court misleading the public. Those were... <laughs> <laughs> and I trust more in the ordinary people of this country than a handful of Oxbridge-educated white males who dominate the Supreme Court. That's where I am. And that pattern goes on. And now what is happening in this country, not in China, not in Russia, is the state is taking measures to prevent that happening again. Judges are telling jurors, there is no defense. You have no job to do here. They are banning people explaining their motivations in court. People have been sent to prison just for using the words climate change and fuel poverty in court. And people have been arrested just holding up a sign that says jurors have a constitutional right to make decisions on their conscience. If you can't believe what you're hearing, please look it up, defendourjuries.org. Not in Russia, not in China, here in the UK. If you're okay with that, vote against this motion. If you believe in democracy, please vote in favour. <laughs>